Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Um, this is Bruce G for ABX. Today I'm going to talk to you about what I think is an impossibly small, portable, pocket-sized amateur radio transceiver. This fellow, the MTR 3B, three bands, 40 meters, 30 meters, and 20 meters, CW only but a really interesting and quite sophisticated pocket-sized, hand-sized transceiver. So we'll get into uh, quite a bit of detail. This isn't really a product review, but I want to talk to you about why uh, this sort of transceiver might be useful to you. I wanted a sophisticated but simple, lightweight CW Morse code transceiver for parks and summits on the air activities, POTA and SOTA. <laughs> I wanted a transceiver I really could carry in my pocket. Easy to use and intuitive to operate. And this mountain topper, as it's called, um, was designed by Steve Weber, KD1JV. This one runs 3 watts, roughly on 40, 30 and 20 meters, and those are probably the most popular of the portable operating bands, um, because the antennas are not too large, essentially. Uh, it has a 500 hertz crystal ladder filter, um, which is, is really quite good. The shape factor of the filter, its ability to reject unwanted signals is, is excellent for something so small. And although the receiver's got no volume control, so beware when you plug earbuds into this, uh, make sure your earbuds have got an inline volume control, uh, because this little rig has got sufficient output to be rather loud. Um, I'm going to run it with a uh, self-powered uh, little speaker, so um, I think from that point of view it, it, that's perfectly loud enough for me when I'm operating uh, out in the field. The rig weighs about 125 grams, four and a half ounces thereabouts, and as I said, operates from six to 12 volts. 12 volts is a maximum voltage for this little rig. The output stage is three parallel FETs, and they haven't really got very much protection. So if you crank the voltage up too much, particularly with a high standing wave ratio on the antenna, then the three little FETs that are your output PA start to dissipate rather more power than they can handle. Okay, so let's take this uh, little box of magic apart and have a look and see what's uh, contained within. I built one of these as a kit many years ago. Gosh, it wasn't as sophisticated as this. And there you go. <laughs> That's what's inside. All nicely assembled. Our low pass filters are here. This for the three different bands. Antenna socket is a, an RCA rather than a BNC or an SMA. I guess SMAs weren't really in vogue when uh, this kit was designed. And, and here are the uh, three PA transistors, these fellows here. Um, exactly the same PA transistors as contained in this. Uh, there's three in there as well. And um, I, I blew up the three in here uh, through running it without any form of ATU into too high a VSWR. But the good news is you can buy 10 of these replacements for about six pounds on Amazon. And they were all good. They all worked. So no problem with that. But there you go, there's the uh, transceiver. Um, so headphones, or as I use um, a self-powered loudspeaker, your paddle in there, your power in here. Uh, give you a bit of advice, don't lose your power lead because this is quite a, a specific socket. It's, um, it's not the normal size that you would find. And, and antenna, of course. Uh, the other thing you have to do, um, it's not very sophisticated in terms of band changing, so you have to line up each one of these 
switches to whichever band you want to operate on. Otherwise you'll have a, a, a mixed <laughs> low pass filter output. So 40 meters, 30 meters and 20 meters. So that's, uh, that's put it on 20 meters. And um, pretty simple really. So uh, I'll put it back together. Okay, so let's uh, let's sort this out and uh, power it up and various things. So I, I'm just going to use my uh, my tracer, four ampere hour, twelve volt battery. Uh, apply the power of that. Uh, my antenna lead. I use my palm paddle my tiny palm paddle as <laughs> the paddle and we'll use uh, this fella very inexpensive but uh, quite useful loudspeaker turn it on right the two that it signal there uh, I'll just do that again. Turn it off. Uh, that tells you that it's on 20 metres. Um, if I put it on 30 metres, it is 3. And if I put it on 40 metres, it gives you 4. Oh. I don't know whether that was somebody calling CQ or somebody working somebody that I can't hear. Um, let's have a tune about. Right, so tuning, uh, this brings it down the band and that takes it up the band. So if we push down on there, it'll just tune. You can't see what's going on, that's the only downside. Okay, somebody giving a 559. Five, EA2, EW. So. Not very strong. Calling CQ. Yeah, four W. See what I mean about being able to listen? He's not really that strong. I'll probably make a QSO of it, but uh, I won't at the moment. Uh, we'll just uh, talk a little bit more about the rig. Okay, so that's turned it right down. So, as you can see, really quite a, a delightful little rig. If you're enjoying this video, then to help improve access to other folks who might also be interested, uh, please give us a like, push the like button, and consider subscribing to the channel. <laughs> it won't cost you anything, uh, and it might help me a bit. Uh, and please provide feedback, uh, what you like, what could be improved, and what other ham radio topics you'd like to hear about. I started this YouTube channel in order to pass on skills and experience that I've gained in some 55 years as a licensed ham radio operator. Gosh, amazing. Um, 
So it's, it's always interesting for me to get ideas from you as to what you would like to hear about. Portable radio is a basket of compromises. It's a compromise for the amount of power that you can run. QRP, low power, is what I normally run, 5 watts or less. <clears throat> the antenna is a compromise, uh, be it a piece of wire slung in a tree, maybe a low slung dipole or a, some form of ground mounted antenna. It's not like running a three element beam um, at 50 feet. I've never had a three element beam. <laughs> I've never had any beam. I've only ever used wire antennas. So uh, maybe portable operation for me isn't that much of a compromise. Some of the advantages are, of course, you can get to a pretty low noise environment. Uh, if I go out portable compared to the uh, home QTH, then noise levels drop from an S9 to an S3 or 4, and that means that uh, using QRP I, I can actually hear stations that wouldn't even appear on my bandscope uh, back at the home QTH. So portable operation has a lot to offer it. As ham radio operators we need to investigate evaluate and ultimately decide what we're going to do. Because, as in everything else in life, taking a decision is the only thing that moves you forward. So 73 is for now. Thank you very much indeed for watching and I hope you have a great day.